Hello, my name is Francis Martins. I'm a 3D character artist and today I want to talk about how I use curve brushes in ZBrush to make hair. Um, it's not a normal method that you usually see online, although there are quite a few tutorials that cover curve brushes. I want to try something different using the Zero Mesh Guide Brush and I'm going to be using this Gandalf model to explain what I mean. So let's get into ZBrush and start. So looking at this model, it's just a sculpted mesh with different subtools. You've got the hair, the face, the hat, the cloth, the beard, the mustache, and so on and so forth. So normally what you do with the curve brushes, you'd select a brush so if you go into the brush palette and select the curve snap brush, what would normally happen is you would get your mesh ready and draw on it like this. And then you tap on it and draw again. And to reposition, you'd use the brush with the blue icon showing, move it around. And sometimes you get this crunching happening with the brush stroke. So you'd have to lock the start in order to get it to behave the way you want it. But sometimes it's not enough. You have, in some, in some instances, you'll have the stroke moving around and intersecting with other bits of geometry because ZBrush is trying to cover every visible subtool and sometimes that can be frustrating. So the principle is simple. Um, I'll just show the, I'll isolate this first, show the wireframe, and I'll just use a slice tool to slice this quickly. And I'll go to my stroke palette and go to um, hair functions. Poly groups, frame mesh. Now, if we select any any curve brush, use the same brush we used before, the curve snap brush, and tap on that curve. You get a fr you get it framed on that curve, and this is basically the general principle I'm trying to to use when I when I use the um, zero mesh guide brush. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'll turn that off. And let's just select that brush now. Skip that and draw some curves on the hair base, starting from the root. Let's draw another. I'm going to quickly open up the stroke palette here and show you something quickly. Normally, the the stroke snap distance is set to about 10. This is fine if you're drawing strokes on a regular basis, but if you're drawing curves close to each other, I'll just turn it up to emphasize what I mean. So if you draw a stroke that's close to the next one, you get this happening where I'll draw it down here instead. So you get it joining up what you get the, the stroke preceding joining up with the next one you draw. And if you're drawing curves close to the roots, you don't want that to happen. So what I tend, what I tend to do is turn this down to one. And that way I can easily go in, I turn my brush size down. And if I have lazy mouse on and turn the radius up, I'm able to go in and draw strokes close to one another without them touching. And when this is done, once you've got the base done, you can then come down and continue the strokes. You can turn this back up now because you will need that to carry on without having to go so close to it. So you can carry on with the stroke. And if you get a situation where 
you have a stroke that's not quite what you want it's not smooth enough or it's a bit jagged if you press six a few times on your keyboard it will smooth out the curve for you let's emphasize that with this one here press six a few times you see how it smooths out here so obviously it's not going to smooth it out to perfection but it will smooth it out a bit if you have a bit of a, a kink in your curve so if you've covered the whole base with your curves you'll end up with this this took about five minutes to draw it's not very precise it's just for the purposes of this tutorial and you can see I've covered more or less every part of the of the hair base and I've used the zero mesh guide brush to draw the curves and um, it's not perfect but it'll serve for this tutorial so once you've got this covered you've got it's evenly spaced out all you need to do is go and pick any brush I'm going to use a hair brush I found online by Dylan Ekwin there are quite a few brushes online you can get you've got brushes by Shane Olson you've got brushes by Martin Verhoeven Martin I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name because it's very full of vowels you've got brushes by many people um, I'm just gonna select Dylan's brush here it's free online you can get it on Gumroad you can get it on, on his website you can get it everywhere basically and Shane also has got a really nice newsletter you can subscribe to and get his brushes as well so you tap on this and you get this mesh but it's too small so what you need to do is obviously go in press s increase your brush size and tap on it again so you get the situation happening now i've got this taper which i don't want i want it to be i want it to taper but not that much so i'm going to lift this up bring this down and i'm going to bring this up i'm also going to change the the style of the brush i don't want it to be this smooth it's a multi multi multi-tooled brush so if you press m on your keyboard you'll get some options i like to use the multi thick a for the strand effect if i tap again you get this happening make the brush a bit bigger maybe okay and then you're left with this situation where you've got the hair on the brush i'm just going to split this off quickly i've got my split on mass points down here somewhere because i've got my menu the way i like it i don't like hunting for menus and sub menus and zbrush is the king of sub menus if you want to find a split you go into split underneath tool and it's a split of mass points i've just customized my menu because i don't want to spend my life hunting for menus and um grow gray hairs split that off and now you're left with this situation here so you've got this but obviously you've got gaps in the middle of the head and between strands a few fixes you can do to this you can quickly mask out the middle invert the mask select your pinch brush and pinch them in together you could also inflate the inflate brush you could also inflate the strands to fill in the gaps this won't take that long if you if you just um if you're a bit more precise with it it won't take long at all so after doing this for a few minutes, let me just get this camera the way I want it. Okay. After doing this for a few minutes, I ended up with this, which is more like what we want. Now, looking at this, I'm gonna show the hair base again, so you can see. So you can see that even underneath these strands, you've got the hair base. It's still there's still quite a few gaps which we need to look at and sort out. But because we have the base still there, we can go back on it 
and draw some more curves with the Z mesh guide brush quite easily. Just repeat the process, draw curves, select our hairbrush again and tap and so on and so forth. So after doing this a few times, I'm just going to undo this quickly and I'm going to get rid of this guy because we don't need him anymore. Delete that. Okay. After doing some curve work a few times, I ended up with a top layer and the bottom layer. I'm going to hide this and hide them just like this. Hide that. There we go. And hide this one as well. I think I have three of these. So that's all that's that's all of them hidden. So after drawing the curves, tapping with a brush, drawing some more curves underneath, tapping again, we've got this nice layered effect with the hair. Now the advantages of this are you could have your dynamesh on top of your base, draw your curves, tap and do it again. And that, this is quite very, this is a very simple hairstyle, but you could have a different hairstyle, which is more complicated, where you want spirals or curves. You could draw your curves, tap on it, adjust. And because you have this, this, this particular IMM brush is quite handy because if you use the move tool, you move everything. I'll just show you what I mean. If you take the, the move tool, you can adjust it how you want. But if you take the move tool, topological brush you could move individual strands and you could basically have flyaway hairs you know just give a bit of variation to it and um, once you're done you can show your render you can show your hat again you do a quick render I like this system because it's quite handy it doesn't take long it's very versatile and it saves me the trouble of trying to manipulate um, the hairbrush from the beginning, from the get-go. Saves me so much time. And then, um, yeah, that's about it. So a few things to note, to remember, are to have your curve modifier. Make sure when using the zero mesh, make sure the snap distance is one make sure when you're tapping on your on your curve with a hairbrush make sure the curve itself is the way you want it so if you want let me just go back to that brush again so if you want your hair to taper at the bottom you want to make sure that the curve is facing that way and if you want it to taper at the top you want to make sure it tapers that way and um Everything else is quite straightforward. So that's it, I think. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, just hit me up on Polyjunkie, on our station, Instagram, or Facebook. Uh, that's about it. Take it easy.